Hello, 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 everyone. <laughs> Who is there? Let's talk about building minds. Let's talk about building minds. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Topsy Gift, and I'm here in Ternopil, Ukraine. I've been on this topic for the past two days, and I'm so, so excited that we're making progress, and I'm getting a lot of testimonies from people about this topic hello sir uh, uh thoughtful writer or oh, ma all right <laughs> thank you so much for joining god bless you god bless you um hello sir paul bassi thank you for joining god bless you please as you come in help me share the video and invite your friends help me share the video and invite your friends today i trust god that um it will be awesome as usual it will be awesome as usual <laughs> You know, yesterday we, we we had some points about uh, why your marriage is not working. And uh, I promise you guys that we're going to have a medical doctor talk to us today. But I'm so sorry. I couldn't, um, I couldn't get, I couldn't keep to my promise. But I promise tomorrow we're sure going to have a medical doctor talk to us about the, this aspect of, you know, another aspect of marriage that had to do with medicine and uh, why people have problems in that area so i hope tomorrow we're gonna do a medical part of it and next tomorrow or perhaps monday we will do the religious part of it as well so this topic is whole lot of series but let's see what we can do hello sir thomas tana thank you for joining god bless you Mwansa, Joseph, Molenga, thank you for joining. God bless you. So please, as you come in, help me share the video and invite your friends. Help me share the video and invite your friends. So we're talking about why your marriage is not working. Why your marriage is not working. I know this uh, video is supposed to be for just married people, but as well, single people can as well learn from what we will sure discuss today. So... I think this video is for everybody but you know we just have to say we just have to say married because there's some points we will talk about that has to do with just that has to just do with married people right <laughs> so so thank you for joining sunny j pepe thank you for joining god bless you so please go ahead share the video invite your friends i believe today is going to be another awesome day as usual i believe today is going to be awesome as as it has always been so we talk about we've been on this topic for the past two days and i did a recap of what we did a day before yesterday and today i'm just going to do a recap of what we did yesterday i'm not going to go you know to do what we did a day before yesterday i'm just going to tell you what we did just yesterday all right so we talk about um we I, I asked a question and i said the first point i gave which was a question and i said what was your what was your marriage built on in uh in the sense that i was i was asking was it built on emotions was it built on outward appearance what you was it built on money was it built on you know beauty was it built on what exactly is the base what exactly is the foundation of your of your marriage you know that was a question i started with yesterday why did i do that because i i understood that a lot of people a lot of people you know get into marriage why because the guy is very buoyant or the lady is very pretty or the lady is very tall fair hairy eloquent you know some some reasons that can easily disappear into thin air okay some reasons that cannot hold cannot hold water i'm sorry to say it can't hold water for long because eventually i asked i said what if those reasons those reasons you you listed i, I just all of a sudden disappear if the beauty is, is no longer there, she's no longer hairy, he's no longer handsome, he's no longer uh, wealthy, if all the reasons is no, is no longer there, 
what exactly will sustain the marriage? What exactly will keep you going? What exactly is going to make you say, I want to still do? I said yesterday, I, do, I did yesterday and I still want to do. Exactly what will keep the relationship? You know what? You understand? So that's the first question I asked yesterday. Why did I do that? Because it is important that we all understand the base of our relationship, of our marriage. What was it built on? Was it built on, on trust? Was it built on commitment? Because these days, <laughs> these days, oh my God, marriages are built on contracts. Marriages are now viewed as contract based, no longer as commitment. As it, what it, as it was intended to be. You know, before now, we say we value marriage so much. We value marriage so, so, so much, you know. People say, yes, I do, and it is, yes, I do. But these days, it's now, it's no longer the, the, the yes, I do, it's, it's no longer sincere. There's no sincerity in, you know, in the yes, I do. Behind our mind, behind the back of our mind, we know that as I'm saying this, yes, I do, it's just for familiarity. Okay? I can always get out of this relationship at any minute of my life, at any moment, at any second. So I was, I'm like, really? So marriages are no longer built on commitment, but on contracts. So we view marriage as contract not longer as commitment as it was ordained to be as it was you know as god made it to, to be a union that's going to bring joy a union that is going to transform lives a union that is going to that is supposed to that is supposed to you know be together you know glorify god bless humanity be a blessing to their children a union of example so it's no longer like that what is it now it's now like a contract it's now like a contract society have you know you know given us this ideology you know had coined the real meaning of marriage and make it look like a contract and many people have buyed into what society wants from us for us okay society is now defining our marriage our homes for us and we are giving into it we have accepted what society have defined for us as as married as marriage okay you just you just saw a lady or the guy you dated for two weeks or three days or legs or whatever and you just go to the court get your papers get your document yes i you that's if you even if you even, if you even did the white wedding there's no value there's no the vow, the vow on the altar of yes, I do, it's no longer for real. It's no longer truthful. It's no longer truthful. There is no, there's no longer an altar of truth in, in, uh, in marriages this day. People go into marriage and they, they know that if this, if they just say it to themselves, at the back of their mind they said to themselves if this guy messes up tomorrow i get out if this woman messes up tomorrow i get out so if your mind is already uh, prepared to leave the marriage what then is remaining because eventually you will see you, you will eventually find fault in this person you eventually see that this person it's not this person is not perfect so because we have all viewed marriage as contract no longer as commitment so what we what we get is divorce the rate of divorce all over the world keep increasing on daily basis the rate of divorce keep increasing even though most marriages are done in religious form in the religious altars hello my evil ketika thank you for joining hello sir paul basil thank you for joining hello sir sunday jeremiah thank you so much for joining god bless you please as you come in help me share the video and invite your friends 
I know I don't have solution to, you know, solving the problems that engulf marriage, but I just have a contribution to give to, to ourselves, to all the couples on earth, to all the couples to come. That men should stop viewing marriage, let people stop viewing marriage as contracts. Marriage is, wasn't meant to be contracts. Marriage was supposed to be a union, a union that produces love, a union that produces peace, a union that will produce understanding, a union that will produce solutions, a union that will be a blessing to humanity. A union that can glow that that God could view and say, "Those are my kids. Those are my children in whom I am well pleased." A union that will bring joy to God's heart. But what has what what is happening these days? It's no longer like that. It's no longer like that. That's no. It's that's no longer the base. That's no longer. Um, you know that's no longer what it's what it is so people go into marriage because they want to get something from it i've seen ladies who go into marriage because this guy is so wealthy this man is so wealthy and that is why young ladies young girls as fighting to marry old men that have that have achieved a lot in life not because they love the old man but because they know that if i get married to this man and tomorrow i wake up i say i don't i don't i'm not doing again i am I'm, I'm 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 opting out you know what they get part of the man's wealth so wealth is being allocated to them the woman will sure get her share from the marriage. So even if it's one day marriage, even if it's two days, even if it's one week, even if it's... As long as there is a contract that binds the both of you, my dear, you are going to get something out of it. So it's people now going to marry. That's why a lot of ladies don't even want to marry guys that are, don't, they are not wealthy. <laughs> they are not wealthy because they, they feel like I, I'm not ready to suffer one and then what if I want to go out? What if I don't want again? What if I want a divorce? What exactly will I be living with? So it's like I'm not I'm not going to benefit anything from this young young poor man So I better look out for the married ones and get them to marry me secretly or openly and then I tell them I'm no longer interested, I want to opt out, and I get a share from their wealth. So you see the mindset that, that, that people are going into marriages with. So in this kind of, um, if, this, if somebody has this kind of mindset, exactly how do you want that marriage to work? How do you want that marriage to work? Is that not part of the reason why marriages are not working today? Is that not part of the reason why marriages are not working today? You give the answer. You answer it for yourself. What exactly has our society turned matrimony to? What exactly has society turned union of that is supposed to be of love that is supposed to be union of peace what what a society turned it into you know the intention of the creator the intention of god to bring a man and a woman together isn't what it is today isn't what it is today we've got it all wrong we've gotten it all wrong and our children are copying from this whole menace our children are copying our children are seeing it thinking that's the way that's the that's the way it, it, it works but it's wrong but that's not true that's not the way it's supposed to be 
it is high time we wake up and do the right thing. Believe me, 90, over 90% 90 of young ladies these days will never, will not want to marry a poor man. Now, I'm not saying that marrying um, a poor man is something of a pride. You understand? But marrying a man who who is in line with your purpose and your vision, a man who you 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 guys can work together, a man who who understands your person, a man who is running in, in the same direction with you, a man who can build you, who you can build, a man who you know that. When I get in, when I when we get uh, um, entangled, when we when we say yes, we do, we know we are moving in the same direction. We know that this marriage is going to produce awesome results. So go into marriage with the right mindset. Not because the woman is pretty, or not because her breast is still standing, or not because she has a fine legs, or she has fine skin, or not because she has long hairs, not because she her eyes are so bright and so pretty, or not because she is tall, not because she is short, not because she is fair, not because she is dark. All the flimsy, 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 flimsy reasons people go into marriage for. Marrying a man not because he has all the money in the bank, not because he, he can buy you Ferrari, he can buy you an helicopter, he can buy you a filling station, he can build you millions of houses, not because he has all the money or position, not because he's too he's too tall, he's too educated, he's too accurate, he's too articulate, he's too handsome, he's oh my god, he can dress, he's oh not for those reasons if you marry for such kind of reasons believe me you run into trouble why because when those reasons disappear you will find no 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 base no reason to love again you find no reason to to love this person again why because the reason the base what holds the relationship what's was was your base what was what the relationship was, was built on was on was on free volties was on freckles things that cannot hold water things that can disappear tomorrow those were the reasons that hold your your mind that is holding your marriage so have you asked yourself what if something happens to my husband's wealth Will I still be there? This guy is so handsome. What if something happens to his leg and he becomes crippled? Will I still be there? She's so pretty. What if something happens to her face? Will you still be there? Oh, she's so hairy. I love her long hair. What if she gets into an accident and the hair is being burnt down? And part of her body is burnt to the extent that even surgery cannot correct. Can you still love this person? Yes, because if you base our, if we build our relationships and our marriage based on all this, <laughs> based on all this, well, we might be building a, a wrong marriage. Hello, my blessing, Brown. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please, as you come in, help me share the video and invite your friends. Let me share on my screen here. So please share, 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 share. Help me share the video and invite your friends. I believe today is going to be another wonderful day like two days ago has been. And uh, like I said yesterday, that uh, tomorrow I will be bringing in a medical doctor that will be telling us some you know some stuff about 
this aspect you know why people's marriage are not working and some reasons why it's not working in medical forms you know what's what's happening you know problems that that people have you know either health wise and all that and how to solve it and you know how to go about it so i'll be inviting a medical doctor tomorrow to treat that so it is so wrong that we go into our marriages with the wrong mindset when we go into marriages with the wrong mindset then we get the wrong results you get the wrong result because you went in with the wrong mindset hello mark charles thank you so much for joining god bless you please help me share the video and invite your friends help me share the video and invite your friends so just we're just doing a recap or i'm still doing a recap of what i did yesterday and um and we talked about how that um now adultery it's it's now a talk of a thing of a thing of almost a norm it's not almost a norm in, in, in with married people these days that adultery is now almost a normal thing and it's no longer a sin you know so adultery had really broken homes and adultery can never ever sustain any home as long as you are you are selling out you sold out the vow you made at that altar it's like you turning against your word it's like you stabbing yourself so you don't expect to you don't expect to sell your vow you don't expect to um, you know break your vow and expect the right result function in your home and expect everything working in perfect so adultery is almost the normal is almost the norm these days with married people both women and men it's almost normal it's almost okay and so that was what we talked part of what we talked to yet talked about yesterday and that we need to check ourselves and put the end to it it's really breaking homes okay so this uh, the third point i talked about yesterday was how that couples are now too busy to take care of their health too busy to take care of their life you see a woman that just got married in less than two three years she's looking so unkept she's looking so unkept hello aisha happy birthday sweetheart thank you so much for coming and i pray that your days will continually be joyful i pray that you will always find favor in the sight of god and in the sight of men all right so happy 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 big birthday students okay enjoy your day and thank you so much for the work you're doing for humanity you know heaven is taking record of it someday you're going to receive both your earthly reward and your heavenly reward <laughs> thank you so much you're such a wonderful sister thank you so much aisha happy birthday should i do a happy birthday song for you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you <laughs> happy birthday aisha <laughs> happy birthday so thank you for coming harem sign thank you for coming god bless you god bless you please share 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 the video and invite your friends so i'm still doing a recap of what we did yesterday yeah so i talked about um i were on one dating and i if you if you missed yesterday's video please find it find time to watch it i know it's awesome i know it's powerful you're welcome aisha she's saying thank you so much you're welcome uh so a lot of like, uh, husbands have turned dirty as well as the women so it's not just women that are you know to that are dirty these days even husbands are, are become even dirty and i talked about how you can solve it yesterday i talked about both party how you can you know overcome such kind of problem and then i talked about quick to anger quick to anger how that people are now you know 
so if you are too quick to anger and you want to act at every point and you can't control your anger you know i told i told you how that people are now behind bars people have gone to prison for years prison for lifetime all because of anger how anger have destroyed marriages these days so uh, men stabbing their wives to death women stabbing their husbands to death you know a lot of problem all in, all because of uncontrollable anger people not being able to control their anger how that it has hurt children because you know when a child you know sees how the the mother stabs the father to death no matter how little that child is if that child can if the memory of that child can retain that incidence you know it can psychologically you know depress that child it can it can really bring chaos to the life of that child tomorrow and you the person you the spouse you the mother or father who killed the you know your spouse would definitely be behind bars and is that what you want for yourself aren't those aren't this the part of the reason why marriages are not working today you know so you can put up your your thoughts or your or what you think reasons why you think marriages are not working today i don't have all the answers but the little i have i share okay so that's what we did yesterday so for today i want to start today by saying that there's something i i've noticed in where i'm coming from my own house in my own father's house <laughs> all right that there was a problem but my father didn't see it as a problem but my mother so it has a problem okay so and what was that it was apology my father does not know how to say i'm sorry he does not know how to say i'm sorry if my father is wrong he can never ever apologize i stayed with my parents until i left my father to date had never ever apologize to my mother no matter what no matter what he does to her he is always right he is always right oh oh my god women are suffering women are suffering hello my idara wafo thank you so much for joining god bless you man women are suffering in their homes and you know what my mother has not left the relationship she has not opted out she has not divorced why because She's like, you children are my comfort. You children are my comfort. That's the only reason why I'm in this marriage. That's the only reason why I can look back from where I'm coming from and still be here. That's the only reason why I could have, a, I could still smile. Because I know that tomorrow will be better than today. My father, just like he can never apologize to his wife, he can never apologize to his children. I, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> apology, apology have destroyed a lot of homes. Just I'm sorry. A woman not being able to say I'm sorry. A man not being able to say I'm sorry had brought chaos in our homes today you know most times my mother will complain and tell my father you can't even say you are sorry oh jesus and he will walk away what will happen she'll pretend that nothing happened the moment he comes back everybody's laughing everybody's eating and you know but that woman is dying in silence you know the the thing became normal i don't i don't understand i i've i've never well i don't know if there's if there are creatures if there are people like my father out there men that are too proud to tell their wives that they are sorry oh sometimes I used to, I tell my father, I say, anytime you go, anytime you have the opportunity to pray, eh? 
tell God in your next word, give me such kind of wife. Bring back this kind of woman into my life. You know why? Because it is not, it is not all women who can endure what she has endured and what she's enduring. It is not all women, women who can stand your wrongs and still not get apology from you. It is not. It's it's not it's not it's not possible it's it's not it, as in the percentage will be very little the percentage will be very little so it's it's now a problem we some some ladies are too proud or too or too wise i don't know if i should say wise or proud or words to tell their husbands that they are sorry for you know come for make for do um, halting them or doing something wrong ordinary breeze ordinary air i am sorry how many letters i am sorry forgive me i'm sorry please i'm sorry ordinary i'm sorry just as little as it sounds had produced you know problems and chaos out there so happiness is no longer in our homes all because of i am sorry all because of apology most men don't know how to say i'm sorry some women too don't know how to say they are sorry why won't it be a problem why would the marriage work please put out your your comments there tell me other tell me reasons i don't have all the reasons but you could place out reasons why you think marriages are not working today. Because I know there are thousands of reasons I cannot even factor. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to bring out some of the ones that I saw in my own house, in my own family where I'm coming from. That happened in my own presence between my father and my mother. You know, somebody was saying, I, I was saying when I started this uh, video two days ago, I said that uh, people said, I'm sure people will say, what does she have to say about marriage? What does she know? You know, but I might not have all the knowledge. I might not be 10 years or 20 years or, you know, 50 years in marriage. But I'm saying from what I saw in my house. And I know it's happening in some other people's homes as well. Because I had friends. I visit them. I see things. I, I'm like, just to say i'm sorry what does it take to say i'm sorry that is how arrogant we have all we've become you know so just the word i'm sorry had caused chaos in our homes today and has made marriages not to work not working people are together a man and a woman is living in a house with children but they are not married <laughs> as in what I mean is that they are not happy. There is no joy. The marriage is not working. They are enduring it. The both parties are enduring it because you know why? If the woman is not happy, it will affect the, 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 the marriage. If the man is not happy, it will affect the marriage. Why? Because you can't give what you don't have. You can't take. There's, it's only what you, you produce in that marriage that that will function if you if love is produced is love that will function is love that will reign and love produces joy peace and happiness so if that is what is in, obtainable in the home everybody will be happy but if not then everybody will not be happy but living in pretense so people will be living in pretense and you know trying to um manage to, should i use the word trying to accommodate yeah that thing that's the word trying to accommodate each other so as little as i'm sorry as little as apology a lot of people cannot do it i come from a home of example where my i said for how how many years now from the time i was i was a child that I started retaining things in my memory, that I started seeing things happen in my house, 
I've never, ever, ever, ever seen my father apologize to my mother. As well as my father apologized to us, the children. So he believes that because he's the head of the family, because he's a man, that all the apologies must come from all the people that are beneath him, all the from his children, from his wife. So he believed that since I am the head of the family, my wife is a helpmeet, she ought to apologize to me even if I'm the one that did the wrong. <laughs> I am so shocked. I am so in shock. To the extent that even if our father offends us with the children, he will never ever tell us he's sorry. We will be the one to tell him we are sorry. As in, I used to imagine, is that how other people's home, is that how everybody's home is? Is that how marriage is? You know, when I met my husband, Oh, because of the things I saw in my house, I said to myself, I will not get married. No, I, no, I'm not ready to get married. No, no, I don't even want to be married. Hello, my Samara Amaka. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Hello, sir. Adewale Richard. Thank you for joining. My husband just joined. Clemsy Clement. Thank you, sir, for joining. God bless you. Please, as you come in, help me share the video and invite your friends. So it's, I'm just in shock. One day I asked my father, I said, why is it that it is only you that, it, that takes all the glory? It is only you that receives all the apology. Why can't you say you are sorry to your wife or to your children? You know what? He will tell you he is the man. I am the man. I'm the man of the house. So I deserve to be apologized to. And I'm like, but you are the one who did the wrong. You are the one who offended us. You are the one who offended your wife. You are the one who offended your children. Why can't you say you are sorry? Is it a big deal to tell your wife I'm sorry? Is it a big deal to tell your children I'm sorry? And he said, yeah, well, he is the man. It doesn't matter what he does. He's always right. I'm like... So, all of the experiences, all of the things I saw in my house, and I was like, I told my mother, is this marriage? Is this thing? Is this thing? Wait, this thing I'm seeing here, is it what you, me, I will go and face in another man's house, in, in a man's house? I told my mother, if this thing is marriage, I will not marry you. I'd rather remain single than to go to a home where I don't have peace. I didn't have peace here. I go to another home, life goes on till I die. I'll live like this? Uh uh. Please, is there any other? If I don't get married, won't I go to heaven? Yes, I will. I'm not getting married. No, I'm not. No, no, I'm not marrying. So, when I met my husband, <laughs> he went through hell to try to convince me that he's not the same kind of man that I met in my house. He worked so hard. Hello, Ban Banelli. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Hello, Sabinu. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Please help me share the video and invite your friends. All right? So as little as apology, it has become a big problem in our homes today. It has become a big problem. And people are, you know, getting so angry about the fact that their spouse cannot apologize to them see i if my father was the head of state <laughs> if i did i used to tell my father i say ah if you were god if ah thank god man the man is not a god if you were god you would demand for our head if you were god you would demand for our lives for every time we offend you, you would demand our head in exchange. Hello, Elizabeth Aina. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please help me share the video as you come in and invite your friends. So as little as apology, my father could not say the word, I am sorry. 
I am sorry. I am sorry. He is he's too big to say it. Why? I'm sure he also learned it from his own father. I'm sure he got it from the African mentality that as long as you are the head of the family, as long as you are a father, it is the women who should respect you, who should, you know, bow before you, who should call you Lord, who should call you Lord, you know, reverence you. So you, it's like you are so perfect that, that no matter what you do, everybody should close their eyes to all your wrongs and and but you you should open your own eyes to their wrongs so i said to myself i said thank god men are not god if my father was a god uh, 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 he would demand more than more than i'm sorry from us he would have taken our heads in exchange a man that is so proud and arrogant. A man that is so full of himself that he cannot apologize to his wife or kids whenever he's wrong. And then you tell me that that is a home that is working? You tell me that that marriage is working? Are you serious? You tell me that that is not a reason why, it should, why marriages are not working today? it's it, it's i don't know if if that attitude is from the african mentality i don't know but i know that it was too i was a child i was a child but i know that it's not right for you to offend somebody and you don't apologize to them and you think that you are too big to say i'm sorry i didn't understand and I wasn't ready to go into that kind of home. I wasn't ready to face re that reality. Because I said to myself, if this is what is obtainable in all homes, in all marriages, after you go through the hell, you know, of childbirth, you know, you, you struggle, you, you are here, you are there, you go to work, you take care of the house, you cook, you bear, you bet your kid, you make sure everything everything is put to in, put in order. You Oh my God, you were working so hard to please everybody in the house, to please your husband, to please your 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 your, your, your children. Everybody is demanding everything um, working well for you, everything good from you. So after all of it, the man offends you. He can't say he's sorry. Oh my my my! And you tell me he's working, and you tell me you are the man that you deserve just it's just you who deserve to be apologized to do you know to the extent that even if even if my father's elder brothers come to the house my father will never say he's sorry hello sir diamond ranty thank you for joining hello a um a Ekene. thank you for joining god bless you so it was it pissed me off my life was just terrible stay living in that my father's house oh my god i saw a lot and i was like god this is marriage no i don't want i was running for my life i said no so my my husband it took him it took him a lot of work to convince me that he's not the same that all men are not the same because i thought all men were the same i thought all men were the same and i said god i better be a norm is there any is there any crime if you're not married would you go to heaven yes will anybody reject you when you get to heaven will anything happen to you will you not be blessed you know are you will you be cursed if you are not married you know all of it and i and i said since it's not none of all those you know will happen to me i'm not getting married hallelujah Elizabeth is saying, this is the reality you are talking about, sis. That is true. It's happened everywhere. So, men, please. Women, please. Let's bring down this whole ego. Let's, 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 let's deal with it. Let's throw it away. God, 
go if i said yesterday i said yesterday and a day before yesterday that if god could be so awesome so simple in the book of revelation uh, in the book of genesis rather we were told that jesus that god comes down to dwell with adam in the cool of the day if he could be this simple to call david a man after his heart if it could be this simple come on why are we who are just flesh to flesh human we did not create anything it was god who created us we did not create ourselves why are we now making life difficult for each other why can't we love our why can't we love in return Elizabeth is saying, okay, one minute, let me read what Elizabeth is saying. This is the system many men grew up in Africa, the system that teaches them that they are a king. To, to the grow up, <laughs> I don't know, grow up, Kabi Yesi, Kabi Yesi syndrome. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. So it is wrong. It is wrong. We become human worshippers. So human, they want to, they want us to worship. Men want now want us to worship, you know, to worship them rather than seeing ourselves as partners, as friends, as you know, as colleagues. If God could call David a man after his heart, for God's sake, why? Why are we so, 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 you know, so full of ourselves? What, what exactly do we have that has not been given to us by the Almighty? Elizabeth is saying they are looking for slaves, not wives. You see, that is the true, absolutely true. So the African man wants to subdue the woman to slavery rather than seeing this woman as as friend. Listen, I, I, I used to tell I, I used to tell my husband that see God said we are help meets does not mean that we are slaves to any human. The help me does not make you a slave. Help meet is just in case you forget anything, eh? While we are planning together, while we are trying to raise our lives together, in case you omitted anything, I, I, and I still remember it, I have been reminding you. So while you are fixing A and fixing B, we are fixing, we are working together. It's supposed to be con it together, like connection. It's, it's not supposed to be separate. There is no, there's no, you are the man, I'm the woman, you, anything I say, sit, you sit, stand, you stand, lie, you lie, you know, why? And that mentality has brought about this, this ego, ego, such that men can no longer say they are sorry when they, when they offend their wife. So it's it's terrible. It's it's really terrible. It's really terrible. So I grew up in a home that that was that was just like that, and you know what? Part of the reason why I I also have chest pain today, and I'm so emo I'm just an em I'm so emotional. I'm an emotional human. <laughs> it's because of where I found myself. What did what do I do? I cry instead. Hello, Machinwe. Thank you for coming. God bless you. She's saying the the African mentality has messed up marriage. That's true, ma. That's so true. That's absolutely true. You know, I don't know how this whole thing, how it started, when, where, who taught them this kind of attitude? Who taught them that humans should be subjected to slavery? 
it's crazy it's crazy so what i do when when my when i see my mother hurt you know what as a little child i i look for a secluded place i look for where nobody will see me i will just go there and cry and cry and cry and i'll say to myself oh god why did you bring me to this kind of home why am i here oh god why did you bring me to this kind of family every time is one issue or the other you know is it that my father is trying to hit my mother the whole people are gathering and saying ah sir please no it's okay don't do that ah you are you want to kill her this jesus christ i used to say god sometimes i tell my husband i say ah why do you think god brought me to the to that family why do you think god brought me to you know and he's like god brought you to that family so you can share these testimonies that you are sharing today and liberate others because if you don't have experience you will not understand people will not understand machi way is saying we all need to see relationship as exchange you got what i need okay that's that's mess, um, that comment has gone up let me look for it on my laptop okay let me look for it here um as exchange you got what i need to to be a better person while i have what you need to complete you we exchange beautiful great great some men till today ah, 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 ah they still have that same mindset they still have that do you know that some, some guys who are not married today they will fight when they hear this kind of truth they, when they hear this kind of message they will fight it they will tell you you don't know what you're saying you don't know what you're saying go and read your bible very well in the bible god said that we women should submit to the to the man so it's not just our tradition or our forefathers that subjected women into slavery even God himself knew that knew the place of the man. That was why he ordered the woman to submit to them. So some men can so fight this thing I'm saying. They will so fight it and tell you that that is how it's supposed to be. The woman should be under. So when I say sit, she sit. When I say stand, she stands. When I say lie down, she lies down. When I say get out, she gets out. When I say come back, she comes back. So, <laughs> there's this remote control that I have as if she's one electronic. She's one toy that you can remote up and down. For what? For what? that wasn't the intention of god listen for those of us that have not read that bible that's part also that says submit one to another some men see that submit one to another and they fly they close their eyes to it and they look at the one that only says so where it suits them where it will suit them See, we are all made in the image of God and likeness. And he cannot watch his image being put to slavery. He cannot watch his image weep day and night, you know, because of another man. Because an another man chose to make her look like a slave. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. If our forefathers have taught us anything wrong, change has come that is why people are uh, you know thinking if you say i cannot change that is as it has always been i cannot accept change it means stop using phones stop using cars stop building a, a modern kind of house as well if you want to remain in that your ancient mentality you cannot undo what you have learned you cannot unlearn it then do not go with technology as well don't have tvs in your house don't have anything that people produce because that is change right there that is change right there don't use electricity that is change right there in your house 
as change come we need to work with it as long as it's the right change you work with it you work with it don't resist change don't resist it it's for our own good i mean and i mean not the kind of change that will bring pain to us i didn't say oh because change we should change then let's go into let's allow you know ourselves to become um arm robbers or prostitute or prostitutes or anything any change that you know can produce pain instead but positive change that that can bring that can produce more love that can produce love peace harmony that can produce better society positive change is what i'm talking about hello villa miss thank you for joining shalom thank you for joining please help me share this video and invite your friends so it is just so annoying just so annoying that men have forgotten that they are also human they are human as that woman is a human that's how you are also human if there's anybody who who should who sh who will who should take us as slaves who should treat us as slaves it should be god because you did not create the woman that is in your house it is the creator that should create that should treat the created like a slave but if the creator have refused to treat the created as a slave then you the created do not have right to create to treat another human that you did not create equally wrong the bible say do unto others what you want others to do unto you who are the others your wife are also part of the others your children are part of the others don't look at others as people out there don't look at others as your pastors your deacons your elders out there others are part of the your household your household are the part of the others that you should do do good unto the bible said do good unto all men especially those in the household of faith who are those in the household of faith your family are they not part of the ones in the household of faith? Are they not? If there's anywhere you should set example, it should be from your home. Because you know what? Charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. So the next point I have here is what I call praises praises hello coffee power thank you for joining please help me share the video and invite your friends praises to say well done you you've done awesomely well to praise your spouse has not become a big deal to praise your spouse has now become also a big deal some of us cannot say, say some of our spouse cannot say thank you when somebody when your when your husband does something for you can't say thank you when your wife does something for you can't say thank you you cannot praise your wife you cannot praise your husband if god would want praises would demand praises from from us if we are if we were created for his worship then worship is found around us. If we were created for that purpose, if we were created to, to give glory to him, then we, we who are the glory carriers cannot give what, cannot produce and something else. We cannot produce a vice. We have to produce the same. We have to praise our spouse. We have to encourage them. We have to tell them thank you. We have to learn to tell them thank you. When they do something for you, tell them thank you. When, oh my God. You know today, while I was taking my bath, you know what came to my mind? I said to myself, I wish men would know. I wish men and women will know 
how powerful praise can be. How powerful praise, praise, how powerful it is. I wish people would understand how powerful it is. Now, when Lucifer disobeyed, <laughs> And God has to have to make man in it and uh, in to replace and even you know even to take a better position than Lucifer. That's for you to know that's for you to know how much praise, how powerful praise is. If the heaven, if the heavens are full with angels giving glory to God then you will know how powerful praise is. If men and women could understand that if your spouse is not doing something right, huh? let's say she's kind of lazy or she's kind of, uh, she's doing something wrong. She's not always, you know, obedient to you. She's not always getting things done on time. She's not doing that. The husband also is not, you know, doing what he's supposed to do at home. Being the father that he's supposed to be. And you called one of the days, you called him or her, you called your spouse and you are like, Oh my God, do you know, do you know how, how, how much I am so grateful to God having you as my wife? Do you know how I'm so grateful to God? That every time I want to pray, every time I close my eyes to pray, that I will always thank God for who you are, for making you, for bringing you my way, for making you, you know, be my wife, for being the mother of my children, oh, for, for the kind of things you've been doing, oh, you are here, you always take care of the house, you take care of my kids, you are there fixing everything. You know, while I'm not there, you are always there. You are praying, you, you know, you are praying for us. You are taking care of everything. Listen, the wife, the woman might not be doing it, the, all these things. You are always cooking, cleaning the house. You're doing all this, you're doing all that. You are also trying to, you know, help humanity. You, you are doing this. You are going, you are, you're giving gifts to men. You are thinking of the less privileged. You're doing this. You're doing that. See, all the things that she did not even do, you are just praising her, thanking her. Oh, do you know that in my next word, I would like to marry a woman like you. I would like to marry. And <laughs> she's so amazed. And you are doing it in sincerity, not in pretense. You're doing it with sincerity of heart. You know, and because of this, I've even, you know, I've even, you know, um, decide to help you in every, you know, in every aspect. I will be helping you to clean the house, to wash the plates, to cook. I'll be helping you anytime I see that you need help. I will do it. Whenever I see you can't do it, you can't do it, I will do it. You know, you praise her, you praise her, you praise her. Believe me. By the time you do this two, three times, the woman will, if the woman is not doing what you said, all the things you listed and, and you said she's doing, and you praised her for, and you buy gifts for her for, <laughs> she will start doing it. She will start doing it. Maybe you want, you wanted her to be, to be arranging the clothes properly. Oh, thank you. How the, the wardrobe is always kept clean. The wardrobe, you know, the clothes are always clean, well ironed, well arranged. The house, the kitchen, everywhere is arranged. You are such a, you're such a blessing to me. You're such a blessing to your children. You're such a mother. You're such a, a blessing and, you know, an example to people out there. I am so happy to have you. You know, having to, to tell her things that she is not even doing <laughs> and you're praising her for it. Believe me, when you, when you are not there, she will go back and she's like, wow. But I'm not doing all this thing. Okay, Elizabeth is saying, sis, hmm, trust me, it's only a man that knows his wife is a person of purpose that can do all that. Not the African men who, have to, who we have today that are looking for, oh, I didn't see the remaining, oh my God. 
I didn't see the remaining. I'm trying to find the remaining from my laptop, but uh, it's taking time. Thank you so much for that, Elizabeth. God bless you. So, telling her what she she's not even doing. Maybe she that's, that might be her weak point. Her weak point might be that she's she does not know how to cook properly or she does not know how to dress the house or how to dress the bed or how to you know she has a, she she has a weak point and you know and she knows but rather than making it an issue trying to yell at her and tell her that she's not woman enough how that she's lazy how that she's dirty how that she's this how that she's that instead of reminding her her wrongs you take upon yourself and start seeing the good part of it and you praise her for it and you say oh this 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 you list everything and you're so thankful you're so thankful to god you thank the day she was born you thank the parents who trained her you thank the guidance you thank everything you were like oh my god you are just the perfect match you are just a perfect man you're just a perfect woman for me believe me in no time she will start doing those things you are praising her for she will start doing those things that you are telling her that she's doing, that she's not even doing. Instead of finding faults, she will start doing it. When she remembers that, oh, my husband will soon be back. Oh, my husband praised me for this. She would want to be, she wants to be praised more because she enjoys praises. Because words are valuable to her. It's, and it, it's, it gladdens her heart to hear those beautiful words from your mouth. They said when you praise a king for the one he has done, he will do even much more. So nobody likes criticism. Everybody loves praises. If you do the same to your husband, if you praise your husband and tell him things that he has not been doing, that he is not doing and you praise him for it and you praise him for it before you know it he will start doing it you thank him for the gifts that he he had never bought gifts for you but just thank him for the gifts that he has bought for you and the man is like but sweetheart i've not bought gifts for you he said don't worry don't worry you are a gift to me so even if you don't buy the physical gift for me which i know I know you are not a you are not heart hardened. I know you're a loving husband. I know if I, if it has crossed your heart, you would have bought gifts for me. So thank you for the gifts that I know if it crossed your heart, you will buy for me. Do you know what? The moment the man gets money, if he's passing buy anything that he knows will fit you will suit you that you will like, he will buy for you. Why? Because you praised him when he did not even do nothing. You thanked him when he did even nothing. Do you know the same thing God requires from us? God does not just want us to come to say, thank you for this one that you did now. It is like thank, it's like faith. It's like thanking God for what he has not even done. And you know what? The Bible says, even before we open our mouth to say a thing, he knows it, right? God knows our needs. Before we even request of it, he knows it. So rather than complaining that, God, I don't have a car, I don't have, a, a, don't have long hair, and my face is not properly shaped, rather than, you know, asking God, I don't have a proper house, oh, I, my, my clothes are worn out, my shoes are worn out, or oh, my, my bank account is low, or well, this, this, I don't have a job, rather than looking for problems to complain and tell God, you just thank Him. You just thank Him for everything. You might not even thank Him for yourself, but thanking Him for human, for human race, thanking Him for humanity, thanking Him for the for the inventions, for the ideas he's putting in the, in the minds of people to make the world a better place, thanking him, you will see what God will then start doing for you because you are not selfish. So praises are very important for our relationships to work. We need to learn the act of praises. We need to learn the act of apology. We need to learn the act of praises as well. 
Okay, the next point I have here, it's like, I have seen couples, point number three, I've seen couples whereby, for example, you met a lady in the club, you guys were, you, you okay, you went to a club and, uh, you know, you met this young lady and you, you started dating her and you got married to her and... Let's even say you did not meet her in the club, okay? Let's even say you did not meet her in the club. Let's even say that you got married to her or before you got married to her, she opened up everything, all her secrets and told you why because you are her intended spouse or you are now her spouse and she cannot hide anything from you. You have op she, had, she had opened up everything to tell you how that she did abortion, two two three four times or how many times she did abortion or how that she she has one disease maybe before marriage she told you and you are still accepted marrying her or how that she she had one problem or the other you know how that she has a skull in her bag how she got the scar how that she was once a cultist when she was in university you know when a man or a woman opens up to tell you things like this and you know at the end of the day after few times after maybe few years or after you are married to her or so you start reminding her any little any little mistake she does you start reminding her of her yesterday oh my god you start reminding her of who she was yesterday come on you start reminding her how that she did abortions you start reminding her how that she was once a cultist you start reminding her how that she was once a drug addict oh my god you start reminding her of all her past all her past mistakes for every little mistake she does you remind her of her yesterday of her bad yesterday for God's sake, what kind of home are you building? What kind of joy do you want that woman to produce? And you say, oh, my wife, she's always, you know, she, um, she's not happy. She's not a happy person to be around with. And she's always, a com she's complaining. She's, um, you know, the marriage is crazy. I, I don't even understand why we are still together. You know, she's a witch. Ever since she came to my life, you know, my life has been miserable. I'm sure, you know, she's the reason why my life has turned upside down. You want to produce peace in your home. You want joy in your home. You want love in your home. You want growth. You want God's blessings. You want everything turning around for your good. You want a sweet home. Yet she made one mistake. You keep reminding her of her yesterday. Oh, she, cook, she cannot cook properly. You remind her that because she was in the world, because she was, instead of her to learn, use her youthful age to learn how to bake, how to cook, how to become a better mother in the future, she was prostituting. She was wasting her life. Oh, she was there smoking her life off she was taking drugs and looking for quick money she was transporting drugs hard drugs from one country to another looking for uh, uh, you know money so imagine you reminding her this kind of thing and this woman told you your your spouse told you in sincerity of heart she told you that was my yesterday that was my mistake I can never, I'm now a brand new man. I'm not a brand new woman. I'm not a brand new human. I can't do that yesterday. That I enjoyed doing yesterday, I can't do it again. I, you know, instead of you to see the positive part of your wife and make sure that she, that yesterday she, she, she will never remember it anymore. Instead, she will share it to people if possible she wants to 
to encourage people and you know liberate people but you are the one who is now the the judge of her life who is now reminding her of tomorrow of yesterday rather you are now the one reminding her of her yesterday and you want her to live in peace and you want her to be joyful and you want her to produce peace in your home and you want her to be happy and you want your home to be joyous to be glorious to flow to to be so sweet like honey and sugar really are you serious she told you these things and you still say yes i accept you the way you are you still took her and went to the altar to marry her you re you knew this part of him you knew this part of her you accepted now why are you judging her why are you judging her okay that okay there's a delay in childbirth she's not she's not taking um uh, in when she takes in she has miscarriage or something happens she loses the baby or since you guys got married she has not taken in and now you are not the judge of her life now you are raining insults on her making life hell for her why because she told you of her yesterday what if she had hidden her yesterday from you what if she had hidden it till she died you not knowing why do you want to make humans not to be truthful why are you hiding why are you hiding the good part of her because listen when you keep reminding her of her yesterday and making life hell for her she wouldn't want to tell you anything again because she does not feel secured her informations with you are not secured so why should i tell a man who cannot hold his mouth from insulting me and making me and making life miserable for me why should i tell him more or oh, maybe she even told you just one aspect of her life there were many aspects that she she's she's like let me first tell him this one and see the reaction and now you 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 have made you are making life hell for her how do you think what what on earth will make her tell you more no what on earth will make that man tell you more that he was once an arm robber he was once a and a drug addict he was once a cultist he had once killed somebody he had once done this he has once done this evil he was so open to you and now you are the judge now you are the god who who has the key to heaven to put him in hell right you are the one who, who opened the gate of hell for him right because you think you are you're good enough you think you are the best why why have we made life miserable for our own fellow human or a man <laughs> oh my god a man being able to have the finance to train his wife in university or train her all through you know you then you then assumes her god you then become her god when she wants to talk you tell her shut up i was the one who paid for your university fee fee you don't have rights in this house you can't do anything you you are my slave i brought you i brush you up i brushed you up i brought you to the level where you are today so you owe me everything you owe me your life okay um elizabeth is saying it's because there's no love that's why most marriages are carried out with only motives but no love god bless you ma okay machiwe is saying we all have skeletons under our cupboards you see elizabeth is saying most men don't actually know what love what love is their understanding of it is wrong thank you oh my god god bless you oh jesus i've had a man who told me <laughs> a guy who told me that how can you say that um um you are my girlfriend or you are my fiance and then we can't have sex 
Because their definition of love, it's sex. So if you love me enough, I, we, we do this thing. Let's romance, let's, keep, let's, uh, let's have sex. Let's enjoy ourselves. That is love. That's when our relationship is divided. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And I'm like, really? Are you serious? Like, if I don't have sex with you, that means I don't love you. Are you serious? He's like, yes. This relationship is not working because there is no sex involved. It's sex. So men have replaced love with sex. They have replaced love with sex. So they think love is sex. So when a woman has sex with you, that means she loves you. Or when a man has sex with you, that means he loves you. It's a bloody lie. It's a bloody lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. That's not true. That is not true. There are, there, are, there are a lot of women who are living in their husband's houses today that have secrets that they will never ever tell the man until they, till they leave this earth, they will never tell the man. There are men that they are also like that. Then when you find a sincere woman, when you find a sincere husband to tell you truth, why are you their judge? Why, how come you turn around and became their judge? How come you turn around and using their yesterday to haunt them? And using their yesterday to, 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 to make life hell for them? How come if God is merciful enough to forgive them and erase their yesterday and erase their names from, from the book of death and put their name in the book of life, who, is, who are you to, to tell them that they, oh my God, who are you to judge them? Who are you to determine their outcome? Who are you to tell them that nothing good will ever, ever come out from them? All because of their yesterday, all because of their mistakes of yesterday. What if, what if it was never their, 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 it was not their fault? A woman, the man went into cultis, cultism, not because he wanted to. The girl went to the, into prostitution, not because she wanted to. She aborted a baby, not because he want, she wants to. The guy became an arm robber, not because he wanted to. You know, I know you will say there's no reason that it's worth doing evil, right? Please don't be in a haste to judge people. Don't be in a haste to judge your spouse. If they are kind enough to tell you the secret of their lives, please, I beg you, don't judge them. Don't judge them. Don't use their yesterday against them. Oh my God. Don't do it. Don't do it. I beg of you. Don't do it. Never use a human's yesterday, a man's yesterday, to make life hell for him. Never use a woman's yesterday to make life hell for her. Hello, Sir James. Thank you for joining. Hello, Sir Charles Agbaza. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Please, as you come in, help me share the, this video and invite your friends. Okay, Machinwe is saying they do that to reduce your confidence so you will not be able to challenge them. It is a way of manipulating their partner. Can you imagine? So when you remind her of how that she did that yesterday, she did it yesterday, then she will start feeling that you are the perfect person. You are the perfect person. So you are the God I should look up to. So I am the one who have done all the wrongs. You are so clean. You are so clean. You so kept yourself so clean. You know? So I feel intimidated. I feel privileged. I feel privileged having you as a spouse. So whenever you do wrong, I should still be the one to say, I'm sorry, my husband. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And this kind of problems have made men not to trust their wives and their husbands. Don't judge anybody with their yesterday. Stop reminding your spouses about their yesterday. 
They've let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You know, these kind of reasons are why people keep secrets from their spouse. I, I know of a I know of a wedding that was going to take place uh, when I was when I was living when I was in Nigeria. Um, the church where I attend the, the headquarter, there was a time a lady where was going to wed a particular guy. The guy is so wealthy. Now, this lady was HIV positive, but because this guy was was wealthy, had a lot of money, and she cannot resist his wealth. She was going to marry this young man, knowing that she was HIV positive, without telling the man, without telling this young man that she was HIV positive. Do you know that they've printed cards, they've cooked, they've invited people. People were already on ground waiting as in the day of the wedding. You know, I'm telling you, they sat today orchestrated for this wedding. Everybody was well dressed, waiting for a couples to come and let's do yes. You know, everybody was already waiting for this couple to come and to celebrate with them and let's give them our gift and you know, let's celebrate together. But the church we attend, you know what they do? The Saturday, where, where when you are going to wed, that same day that you are going to wed, they are going to do tests, they are going to do pregnancy tests, and they are going to do HIV tests. So, as early as more early morning, the pastor's wife will take the lady, is supposed to take the lady to a medical, uh, to a, a hospital, to go do HIV and pregnancy tests, and why for the guy, they will do uh, HIV tests for him, and then I think they also do blood group or something, or genotype or something like that, you know, just to know if you, you guys are compatible health-wise, if you are AA and this person is AA, or if you are, if both of you are AS, um, or SS, SS, you know, so, but the most reason why they do it is because of pregnancy and also HIV. So they went to, you know, the pastor's wife went to this, went to the hospital with this girl to do the test. And at first they said she was resisting. She was resisting to do the test because you know why? She knew she was HIV positive. She knew that the result is going to come up positive still. All right. So, you know, but she, she had to do it. You know, she had to force herself because people were around her and they were like you are wasting our time people are waiting because people are waiting this test has to be ready before you know you but you both are being allowed to join to, to be joined together you know the doctor they took her they forcefully took her the doctor took her blood and they ran tests only to discover that this girl was hiv positive and they asked her did you tell your husband to be that you are hiv positive and she was quiet. They called the man and they asked him, did your wife to be tell you, did your bride to be tell you that she is HIV positive? And the guy was shocked to his bones. The guy was shocked to his bones. Now, she had HIV positive. She was HIV positive rather. And she didn't want to tell this guy. She wanted to get into the uh, into the marriage before she would tell him that I'm HIV positive. So that as if the man is saying, you, are, you were HIV positive, you didn't tell me, and you allowed me to get married to you, all right? Or maybe she's not allowed the man to have sex with her and all that. Maybe the night she had to form that she's, she's in her period or form some lies. Why she, she, if she doesn't want to die, if she doesn't want to infect the guy, she will form some reasons why she cannot make love to him. And then if the man, if she then opens up to say she's HIV positive and the man gets furious to say, we are not, I, I can't live with you, I can't marry you. And she going out of that, divorcing the man, she will have to get part of his wealth because the guy is a very wealthy man, very wealthy young boy. So she wanted a part of his wealth. That's why she was hiding that she was HIV positive. Apart from that, and I'm, I'm also thinking that she would have also thought that my life, will, the, the, this guy will have to drop me. He would, 
you know, I would, I, I wouldn't be married to him again, or he would know that part of my life, that part of my secrets, that I'm HIV positive. All right. So she's thinking of what the what the man will say. What if he gets to know? Then he makes life miserable for me. And you know, so what the man she's assuming the man will say in return that's why she she's keeping that kind of as valuable as that information there are couples that are hiv positive and they are living together so why why uh, 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 some reasons why people cannot be truthful enough is the fear of being condemned the fear of being criticized the fear of their yesterday being reminded of them be reminded to them so they keep quiet if i know you are the the judgmental type if i know you are the type that if i tell you one wrong i did yesterday oh i i'm so sorry i forgot to pick up your clothes from the laundry yesterday let's assume when we're not even couples i forgot to pick up your clothes from laundry yesterday or to call your security man about something or to call that mistake you will start you know reminding her if there's an if something else happened you start reminding her that was how you did this that was how you did that so she will say as little as this thing this wrong i did you you are using it against imagine if i tell you that i'm hiv positive what then would you do what then will you do the whole world will have to know that i'm hiv positive you know that marriage was dissolved instantly they call the pastor and say cancel the wedding and the pastor had to cancel the wedding do you know what people had to go home with their gifts people had to eat the food you know food cannot be wasted that you know that kind of thing <laughs> people had to eat and go home with this guy spent i don't know how much but why was that marriage dissolved because somebody is trying to hide her yesterday because she does not want to be reminded of it she probably thought that oh if i tell this guy my my yesterday or what is happening or what is wrong with me i will lose him and i will lose every benefit that comes with him wow or he will be reminding me that i'm hiv positive and using it against me and abusing me now he does not care how i got the hiv if i got it through. so you see so if people know that their yesterdays will be reminded will be reminded of them they will rather keep quiet so when you hear their yesterday please don't judge them don't remind them of it yeah or if not you are pushing them to never tell you anything again and it might not all go well it won't go well with your home because when everybody starts when everybody start keeping things to themselves what kind of home would that be? What kind of marriage would that be? And you know this kind of thing? It's a big problem today. Men who say, like Elizabeth was saying that men do not know what love is, you know? And I was saying that men have replaced sex, you know, to be love. Now imagine if that guy... If that I don't know if they if they had sex unprotected sex before that marriage was going to take place if that guy had had sex with that girl unprotected whether or not that marriage took place he is HIV positive so for the men who force women to sleep with them because they think that sleeping with them is love aha uh -huh, uh -huh, okay okay all right okay that guy will be hiv positive you see so men you need to be careful and know that sex is not love at all i know that's not what we're talking about today so let me not just go into that place in, let me not go to that topic so all of these produces and the next point I have here is lack of trust. What is it that produces, uh, what is it that, you know, makes people, makes couple not to trust each other is um, insincerity. 
when there is no sincerity, when you're not sincere to me, well, we'll begin to suspect each other. If you see, if you are, if you are privileged to meet any woman or any man who is open to you and sincere to you, like I said, don't judge their yesterday, right? And don't use their yesterdays against them. Because that's the only way they will trust you. That's the first way they get to trust you. That their secret is secured, that's a very big plus to you there. Hello, uh, Saint, Saint Williams. Thank you for joining. Hello, Saint Emmanuel. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Please, as you come in, help me share the video and invite your friends. I will soon be done. I think I, I'm in the last point today. And tomorrow, don't forget to join me. Uh, I will be bringing up a medical doctor and um, we'll have a topic to discuss on this. Why, marriage is, why your marriage is not working. We had a medical aspect of it. I want to involve a medical doctor to talk about it because I'm not into the medical field. So I want a medical doctor to talk about that part. That will be tomorrow. All right. So I believe that we are going to be blessed by that, um, that, that the, 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 the program tomorrow. All right. So lack of trust. Lack of trust. So if my ordinary secret, if my secret is not safe with you, then why should I trust your person? Why should I trust you? So lack of trust have also, you know, broken homes today. It's also causing chaos in our homes today. It's also causing big menace today. A lot of people are opting out and saying, I am, I'm not interested anymore. I was interested yesterday. Right now, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'm getting off. I'm getting out of this marriage. I'm getting out of this marriage. Why? Because, oh, he doesn't, she doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me. So, learn to trust one another. Learn to trust yourselves. Learn to trust each other. Learn to trust your partner. But words, like I said, you can't force me into trusting you when you are when you are producing the vice, when your attitude does not speak to trust you, when when everything you do does not say trust him. If I have an issue with my husband and the first thing he picks is knife to stab me to death, and you are asking me to trust him, it's like saying. Stay and uh, 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 believe that he will not strangle you to death one day. Believe that he will not stab you one day. So if, if you have a little misunderstanding and you threaten my life, you are threatening to kill me, you are, you are showing me signs that um, I'm in a relationship that will soon take my life, then you are, not, you are not asking me in return to trust you. I'm sorry. You are not. You have to prove to me beyond reasonable doubt to trust you. I need to have a concrete reason why I should trust you. So you can, if you, 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 your statement cannot say contrarily and you are asking me to trust you. Your, 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 your body language cannot be saying something different and you are asking me to trust you. Hello? That might be that might not be possible. Well, that won't be possible, I think. That won't be possible. Hello, Abba Zayena. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Please help me share this video and inbox it to your friends. I believe this message will liberate some people. I believe this message will be a huge blessing to you know people out there. Uh, we are we are a voice all of us are a voice you are a voice we are a voice if you share this message to people you know you you are like being a voice to them you are the voice to them and if you know because you are helping to solve problems for people you're helping to solve problems so it doesn't matter 
the mouth is coming from it doesn't matter with the book you read it doesn't matter the 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 the, the person you listen to as long as it's taught, it blessed your life and you want to bless another and you blessed another you are the one who we should thank we are the one we should thank so it doesn't matter who is who is in the video or you know and all that so learn to trust each other learn to trust one another and we couples we cannot do contrarily you know and act and require trust from our partner our words has to speak trust our actions have to speak trust if if there if there if there's if our actions are speaking contrarily well we cannot i'm sorry you cannot ask a woman to trust you when your actions are speaking something different you can't ask a man to trust you when your actions are also speaking something different when there's something fishing you can't ask for a trust you can't ask for trust rather so you can't ask people to trust you when you are doing something you know that, that is not in line that brings suspicion i hear of course people used to say trust is aimed it is not demanded you don't demand for trust you people ain't it you ain't trust by you know what people see you do so when, for example if you have a friend and you want to go into contract with the person and you went into this contract and did work perfectly and you've been doing contract with this person you are you or you it's a, it's a bank or it's an organization you are so happy you are you trust the you are like you want to recommend people to this company or to this person why because your deal with this person went on well it was so it was so accurate there was no iota of cheats of you know you know you've been duped or fraud or cheating or anything so you were so satisfied by what you got that that's the only reason why you you would want to recommend it to another person right so you aim the trust as well if you want trust you aim it you don't demand you don't start yelling at your wife you have you don't trust me you don't trust me you suspect me all the time you your, your husband you tell your husband you don't trust me you suspect me all the time he is just a human she is just a human you can't ask for anything less you can't ask her to trust you, you can't ask him to trust you when you're caught when everything about you is just not the same it's not it's not what we should trust it's, it's something we should question it's something we should suspect so don't ask for trust if you don't earn it don't ask for it make sure you are in line you're doing what is required of you that will produce trust that will produce trust so i'm so so happy i think we've come to the end of today's program i am so so excited for all of you that you know commented all of you that shared every one of you who um contributed i read i read your comment they are super 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 you know awesome super contributions from every one of you out there and i'm so so grateful i thank you so much you know like i said two three days ago and even yesterday i said that this man this topic is endless because there are thousands and thousands of reasons why marriages are not working but i can't say it all i can't say all of it i just have to say the ones i can't say you know i just can't have to say the ones i especially i experienced in my home where i'm coming from you know in my father's house you know that's most of the points i put up and i i always use my my family as an example because i want to share my story so that people can learn from what where i'm coming from all right so i'm so happy i'm so grateful for all your shares please don't stop sharing don't stop sharing it's like you doing you know it's like you giving a gift to somebody if i know any couple if i know any couple that is having problem in any of the aspects i've spoken about i will be i'll be sure grateful to inbox my message to them i'll be sure grateful to do that okay so thank you for all your shares thank you for all your comments all your amazing comment i i learned a lot from your comment today and that's why i hashtag this program building minds not because i have everything upstairs but because we learn from each other we learn from one another because we are building ourselves where you build me i build you you know and we move on to make the world a better place for every one of us and our, for our children you know that are coming behind so thank you so much for your support thank you for every for uh, so much for everything i'm sure going to see you tomorrow with a medical friend of mine 
who is going to talk about some medical things that are uh, actually going to help a lot of people you know and uh, be uh, I, i'm sure it's going to be a blessing i'm sure tomorrow is going to be you know a blessing to every one of us uh like today has been thank you so much for being with me thank you for your patience thank you for everything god bless you i remain just my humble self t-o-p-s-y top c so thank you guys and see you tomorrow don't go anywhere don't touch the dust so guys bye bye, -bye.